So welcome to part two of the snake game in Flash CS6 tutorial. Uh, we're going to continue off by pressing Control L or going to Window Library, Window uh, Library, and uh, I should share with you just a little random quick tip. If your interface gets messed up for some strange reason, you drag the toolbars in a strange way. I should you should go to Window workspace. This applies to many different programs besides Flash. You can reset. You can reset Classic or just make it the way it was originally if you wish. Okay, so let's press Control L and I just want you to uh, be aware of some of the uh, symbols we have in our library. We have a body part and it's a square box. I just chose dark green. Food is red. Game over is the one that you see here on the stage. Head is um, <clears throat> in this shape of rectangle as well. And uh, tile is the background tile. I have just like a kind of a background uh, floor that we're on. And notice how these are all sh squares. And these are all the same shape um, uh, and size. So if I double click into one of these symbols, you can actually uh, look at the properties and just notice that the width and height are 25 pixels just so that it's an even multiple of the stage the stage itself is 550 by 550 so you can see that we're moving in chunks if I press control enter just a little reminder that we're moving in chunks and uh, so the game is uh, kind of aligning very very nicely okay Something else to remember is to uh, right click your actual symbols here, like body part for example, and I go to properties. Just make sure that you export for action script because here, this body part, this actual square uh, movie clip uh, we're gonna, is, is a class. We call it body part, so we're creating our own class. And the class happens to be uh, based off a movie clip. So it's the idea of this body part is inheriting all the functions and variables of movie clips. That's the idea of object-oriented programming. So we're creating our own class, but it, it it's also inherits. It gets all the power of its parent. Very cool. So uh, make sure you double check that you right-click properties for the food as well, and make sure you export for action script so that when you, you when you try to create some food object food class in your uh, code it it uh, can find it because uh, we allow it to do so. So when you right click head as well, we also export for action script and the tile, the tile class, we can actually create the tile objects because we also export it for action script. Export for action script in the sense that we want to be able to use this class in our code. Okay, so let me collapse that by hitting the double triangle here. Click on Oops, don't accidentally click on this little button here. It's going to make things disappear in a weird way. So let's click on that again. Okay, so now I have it back. So I'm going to click on frame 1, the letter A. Go to Window, Actions, and start digesting this code here. Okay, so we just start off uh, with a bunch of variables here. Just copy the import statements. We're going to reference these as we need it, but I'm not going to get bogged down too much in going through all of these. We'll just go with the flow as we need them. So I see there's a function called grid, and uh, uh, what we're doing here is we create a function, and this function here actually called grid uh, happens to be the same name of the function here. It means that we're calling the function. We actually want to call all this code. We actually want to run it. So as this program begins, we're going line by line. It's skipping over the function because it's not called yet. So line 40, it actually does something. It's calling this function grid. And what's happening inside of this function? We have a for loop. So the idea of a for loop is that it's going to keep looping over and over again. OK, so the idea is here we have a for loop. Uh, this uh, outer for loop is going through each of the rows, so rows run left to right. So imagine filling in your game with a, a grid of uh, tiles. It's like a background you're, you're building up. So we're going to repeat the rows yay many times. So the first part of a for loop is we initialize it to 0. 
i is less than rho, so whenever you start at zero and you're less than a certain amount, that's how many times you're you're looping. So we're looping rows times. You can see the variables up here. We have rows. Uh, we calculate the number of rows is the total number of rows in the game. So we do the same with the columns. So uh, within each row, we're going to repeat for every single columns. Columns run up and down. So by having a for loop within a for loop, going through rows and columns, somehow we're taking care of every single uh, possible square in this uh, grid. So we have tile.x. So we're setting the actual uh, tiles x and y position. The tile here. Uh, is a sprite, and we're creating using the word new. So we're we're actually creating the actual uh, um, object. So the tau object, uh, this particular tau object is going to be created over and over again. So there's a bunch of tau objects, and every time we create a new tile, we're adding it to the stage. Add child actually draws it. So every, before we draw it, we're setting that unique tiles x and y positions. And uh, I should show you that when you say new tile with a capital T, let me just jump to the library here for a sec, control L. This is the same tile we're talking about, the one that you created. OK, excuse me. Um, so now we get into tile.x. So for this particular one tile, we're, we're setting its x and y positions, and somehow the tile's x position is uh, based off uh, um, the um, the i and j um, positions. If you're talking about uh, x versus y position, that's kind of like i versus j positions, and you multiply that position by the head width. So the head width is 25; it's a constant. And so uh, if I say 3 times 25 is 75, so 1, 2, 3 times 25 is 75, that's the x position of that tile. Now why do we have this head width divided by 2? It's like a little adjustment. Because as we created movie clips in this uh, game, when you actually create a new movie clip, uh, if I go to the library, Control L, and I double click into uh, the head, for example, uh, you double click into this, you notice how there's a, let me press control plus, this little kind of tiny plus sign here is the registration points. It looks like our movie clips were created in a centered manner. So this is 25 pixels across uh, as well as up and down. However, to to adjust the position and when drawing the actual tiles, uh, we have to keep into consideration that the registration point, the center, is is in the middle as opposed to the top left corner. So if you consider the width of this 25 pixel um, uh, movie clip, if you divide by 2, you'll get the 12.5, uh, the, uh, which is half of it. Just It's just like a little offset fixing type uh, issue. OK, so somehow we uh, build up our tile. And when I press Control Enter, you see that you have a light green background. It's very, very quickly, as fast as the computer can, filling up every single row by row by row, column by column by column, each item. The word new is created many times, and and we're creating a bunch of tau objects. All right, congratulations. We finished this part two video of making this epic, awesome snake game.